Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of Phenomenal Views. I'm your host Nick Smith, and of course you know my nephew Tevis Wood. Now, I have not reviewed a movie in a while. I forget, I'm sorry for that, but the movie I that we are here to talk about is a very good movie. It is not a comic book movie, it is a religious movie. Now before I go into this review, I'm just going to say that this movie is not a guilt trip. This movie is basic, this movie... God is not dead is basically talking about how people think God is dead, but ultimately the movie talks about how we have a choice to either believe God's not dead or to believe he is dead. It is our choice. And this movie hits that point very strong, very hard, and very good. This movie had only only two, three actors that I knew was the guy who played, um, what's Josh. his name? Josh. Uh, his name is Josh. And he's played by a guy who played in Good Luck Charlie, which Spencer. played Spencer in Good Luck Charlie. And how long how, did they take him out of the series of Good Luck Charlie? Did they take him out? No, because um, he did a Teddy in the last episode. Okay, so after Good Luck Charlie being starred in this, I'm thinking this guy's career is going to go through the roof because this movie was very good. Acted very well. He was like the main character, wasn't he? Yeah, he was the main character. The, the movie is about a guy who who's taking this certain class, and he has this Christian girlfriend. You know, we get the we get the before like anything happens, we get all these certain characters. We get his professor. We get Josh. We get his girlfriend. We get this girl who is like from some other country who she's not allowed to worship God. Um, then we get. Um, a reporter. We get a we get a reporter who, when you see in the trailer, talks about goes up to Willie and his wife Corey and asking about why they pray during every episode, and we we get her. Uh, we get this pastor, Pastor Dave, and his friend who's a missionary. Uh, we get him, and then uh, what's the difference between a missionary and a pastor? I'll tell you when the video's over. Okay. But um, and then we get this girl. And this other girl who come into the plot of the story later, but basically the story is about Josh, who is just coming into college, and he's apparently wanting to be a lawyer. So, but he has to take the certain class, and when he's signing up for classes, this guy's like, "You might want to change your, you might want to change your professors, because trust me, this guy is like Roman Colosseum throwing you to the lions basically for fun." And he's like, "Well, I can't do that, you know. I, it's gonna mess up my whole schedule. So I'm just gonna go ahead with the class anyway." And he's like, "It's your funeral." So as soon as he gets in there, and we meet the professor, and he's basically saying, "Now I'm just gonna say right here, God is dead." And as soon as that happened, I was like, "Okay, I hate this character already." But I was thinking the same thing too. But they do explain why he does no longer believe in God. And so, like at the beginning of it, if you've seen the trailer, you know that he decides to do a petition. Uh, have all the students sign a petition that saying God's not dead, and he God takes all dead. that God is dead. Uh, my apologies. Don't put that gun with you. Okay. Um, but when he comes up to Josh's seat, he's like, "Can I help you?" And he's like, "I can't sign this. I'm a Christian." And so we start getting these arguments, and then he's like, "Well, he's like, all right, you want to prove God's real? Fine. I uh, um, I'll give you this. Ch I'll give you this challenge." For every the last twenty minutes of each class, you will defend God, and then when He first does it, He stands up and says, "I will be the defender, the teacher will be the uh, prosecutor, and the students will be the jury." We're learning about that in social studies. I know all about that stuff. But um, and his girlfriend, who you you think she's a good character, but as he starts talking about how what he could be doing could basically making him commit basically school suicide basically what that what that what they're saying about that is if he screws up or if this doesn't work his whole entire future of him becoming a lawyer it is dead it's basically like you know you screw this up you don't do what I'm thinking that you're going to try if you don't do what you're going to try to do and do it good you're 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 done you're you're done with school that's it and so his girlfriend's like, you don't need to be doing this. And they don't bring in jo uh, uh, Josh's parents, but he brings he brings them up. He's like, you know, my mom and dad say I, don't, I shouldn't be doing this. It's too risky. And my girlfriend thinks it's even too risky. But every time he keeps bringing it up, she's like, well, you know, you need to do what's best for us. You know, 
She's basically meaning you need to do what's best for us that concerns me, not what's best for us that concerns you. And so when she finds out that he did it, she she gets upset. And he's like, she's like, it's over. And he's like, really? After six years. And they were, and he was, it was their anniversary. And when... Two tickets to a concert. Two tickets to a concert where they met. To to this concert that was going to be at the end of the, at the end of the movie. And so when she, they have a... They have an ar- They have another argument about it, and then the day comes, and he does it. What the? Dude, come on, get back in. Get back in, dude. Oh, stop. Hey, sorry, camera. sorry about that. Yeah, but don't make me do that. But. Let's see what good movie you got. But um, so after that happens, after he gives his first demonstration, his girlfriend is mad and furious. She's like, "You did it. I- I- I'm sorry. You need to do." What you're doing isn't smart. It's not going to benefit you. But he's like, no, no, it's not going to benefit me. It's not going to benefit you. And they break up. And, you know, it's basically like, you know, I'm going to break up with you unless you decide not to do this and then we'll get back together. And then he says, no, I'm done. That that, that That's it. And the only thing you get with the, with the girlfriend character is um, basically she was basically controlling, I guess you could say. You know, like all she really cared about, she, like, they make you think she cares about him, but in the end, she actually only cares about herself and what she wants him to do, not what he wants to do, not what he thinks he needs to do, which is, the, in this movie, stand up for God. And so, you know, she's gone from the movie, and then we find out that the reporter, um, she goes up to Willie, and she's like, how do you feel about the people that you offend when you pray in your show? And he's like, well, we're not doing doing it to offend people. And he's basically, what he's trying to say is, we do it because we love Jesus and we want the whole world to know we love Jesus. And then he quotes saying, if you if you disown me, and like basically what the scripture is trying to say is basically if you disown me in like in front of your friends and like in public, and you shouldn't be saying that you don't believe in God anyway when you think, but when you do. But what it was basically saying is if you disown me in front of peers, I, I disown you. But if you worship me, you know, I will pray, I will tell it to my father. In the lines of that, she's basically just trying to get why they pray during their show. And then she brings up some stuff about how killing the ducks is bad, but that's not the point. Because some ducks are innocent, and she's all like, oh, she's in a, I, I think innocent. she's, I like, think she's in a, I, I think she's an environmentalist. <laughs> but anyways, his presentations, Josh's presentations of each segment, how many was there? Was there four or three? three? There was three. And the last one was the best. And we do find out that each character is connected, and especially with the pastor. Um, before he, before, we're introduced to the pastor before Josh even does his presentation. Please stop doing that. I mean, I tilt this way, but my head I know, stop, back. dude. Um, sorry. But when he goes and talks to the pastor, you know, he's basically saying, you know, if I don't get, the, if I don't get this right, or if I don't do this good, I could be committing su- basically school suicide. And so then when he reads the Bible, the Mr. Minister gives him two verses. He gives him that verse that I just told you about, which was in Matthew, I believe, I think. It was in Matthew. And then there was another one in John. No, there was one in Luke. That's right. It was Matthew and Luke. And when he looks at them, he finally texts the, the minister, and he says, I'm going to do it. What's next? And then he says, be confident when you're telling the truth. Like, you know, like when you're telling about God the truth about God, you know, you be confident with yourself. And, and so that sets up the relationship that these two build. But these two only interact with each other once. They only get other stuff with this minister. Like his missionary who flew in 33 hours. That is a long flight. 36. 36, 36 hours. That is a long flight. I estimated that that's, is, that's, that's that's like, is. that's a day, two hours, and then ten more hours or something along the lines. Nick. You know what? We're That's not talking about that. times more than what I had to travel. But, um... Okay, go on. But, um... So, like, they talk about how, first of all, they're supposed to be going to Di- Disney World? 
Is that where they were supposed to be going? They're supposed to be going somewhere, and Who? they were supposed to be going on the. They were supposed to be going on a trip. Who? The minister and the missionary. Oh yeah, I they, forget. I wasn't really paying attention. To them. They were supposed to be going on a trip, and that when they get when they put their bags in, the car doesn't start. So he's like, all right, I'll just call a rental car. And then when they bring the rental car, the car doesn't start. And as soon as the second time it happened, I picked up on something, which I will reveal at the end. So, you know, it's it's a rental car. He does it. Doesn't work. They bring in the same rental car, but apparently it's like a different model, same color or something. Car doesn't work. So then after that, we get a bunch of these other characters that they show in the beginning of the movie. We get the the girl who is apparently, who worship, her religion is you're not allowed to worship God or believe in God. She takes off her veil whenever she's not around her dad. She works in the school cafeteria, and these two build, she hears Josh talking about wanting to stand up for God. And so as that's going on, when she goes home, she takes off her wrap around her head, and she's actually listening to um first corinthians. first she's listening to first corinthians chapter 15. she's listening to first corinthians chapter 15 and her brother comes in and finds out what she's listening to and she's like you cannot tell dad you cannot tell dad promise me you will not tell dad and his smart mouth and like it goes back and forth we're also introduced to this new character who's um a head of a company or something and we find out he's dating the reporter and unfortunately, we come to find out that the reporter has cancer. So, you know, the boyfriend has something good to say. Apparently, he got promoted to be head of the company or something. And as soon as she's like, he's like, we need some wine for this table, he, I got promoted. I might have cancer. And his instant reaction, I hated this character. The, like, the very first thing he says is, really, could you not wait until tomorrow? I don't really get why that's so bad. I mean, <sighs> explain it to me later. I will, but when he said that, my jaw dropped. I was like, okay, dude. Yeah, I saw it. You're, I'm you're, really yeah, yeah, it. he was sitting right beside me. I was like, okay, dude, your girlfriend, who you say you love, just admits she has cancer, and that's the reaction you have. His reaction. Okay, sir, please, 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 please come up to, please come through the video camera, hand me your man card, you're done. Uh, thank you, Chris, Your for reaction for that joke. was just like. I mean, because I, that is oh, that is awful. Like when you hear someone when someone tells you you die, you don't go, oh, okay. Why couldn't you just say that to later? You go, oh my gosh, I'm sorry. What can I do? We, we can get through this. Nope. He just says, no, no. You wanted love, but love is not real. He thinks love isn't real. And he's basically like, she's like, how can I not see this coming? And he's like, no, you only seen what you wanted to see, which is actually true. And then we're also introduced into his sister, who is actually dating the professor. And their mom is, what is it? What is, their mom's in a mental care facility. Or not, what? their mom's in a nursing home and she has um, dementia. Mom? Dementia. Oh, the, the, yeah. the old lady has dementia. And... You know, he calls her, He she calls him, and she's like, why don't you go see mom? He's like, she's not going to remember that I'm there anyway. And more and more, my, my respect for this man went here, down to here. Like, my respect for this man keeps going down and down and down and down. 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 And we keep... Just like all these characters, they really do fit well on together. And when stuff goes bad, oh, it gets bad. When the when the little brother tells the dad that her his sister is worshiping God, oh, it went worse than I thought it was going to. I thought he was just going to yell at her, but no, he freaking smacks her twice. And he's like, no, you cannot do this. And she's like, no, no, father. Jesus is my Lord and Savior, and he died for me. And then he smacks her again. And then he takes her outside, and he's got his hand around her throat. I'm thinking, oh my gosh, he's going to kill her. He's going to really kill her. That's but, what I was thinking, too. And But luckily, he just kicks her out of the house. But I started crying because I was like, dude, that's a little bit much. But, I mean, I know people believe in different things, but just this movie has a lot of heartwhelming moments and... A lot of jaw-dropping. A lot of, yeah, a lot of jaw-dropping moments. And this is such a good written film. Hey, can you say that ten times fast? Jaw-dropping film, jaw-dropping film, jaw-dropping film. Yeah, forget it. I know, right? But we keep getting into Josh's presentations and about how Stephen Hawking 
is wrong, even though he's like a genius, and even geniuses can fool themselves. And the teacher goes up to him after the after the first or second. Huh? After like the first or second. Um, it was the second one. After the second presentation, he just runs up to him. And he's like, "I swear, if you are trying to humiliate me in front of my class, I will make sure that you." Oh no, that was the first. One. The first one. The first one. He said one. something else about the second one. Yeah, he said, um, the first one, he's like, uh, I will make sure you never become a lawyer. I will make sure you never, ever be are able to do something like that. And, like, it was even more awkward the third time when he did his third presentation. And he got right in his face, and he asked him, why does he hate God? And we find out that the professor hates God because God took his mom away, and his mom was dying of cancer. That's why he hates God. And you know, you know, I'm not trying to like make anyone feel guilty. This movie is not a guilt movie. This movie is so good. This movie is written well, good characters, good actors, good writing, good everything in this movie is good. And the reporter, as she is trying to wrap her brain around, okay, I have cancer. I I'm going to die. As he's wrapping his brain around as she's wrapping her brain around that, she just starts getting depressed and she has to go through chemo. And then when she's in the doctor's office, the doctor's like, are you sure you don't want anyone to, ha to, to do this with you? Do you not have anyone to wait for? And she's like, no, I have no one. And then the door closes, and then when she's writing her report to her boss, she's like, I have cancer. I'm going to die. She starts crying. Which was horrible. It was, it was very horrible. And then we find out that the, um, the professor, the, per the professor's girlfriend is... The daughter of the is the daughter of the one who's in the is in the nursing home, and when she goes and talks to the pastor, and this is one thing that I got in this movie, the pastor couldn't go to to his trip because God didn't didn't want him to yet because God still had work for him to do, and you you understand that when he's taught when he's while he's waiting to get a car so he can leave. God is sending him new people, the the teenage girl, the girl who was dating the professor, um, Josh. Like, he just keeps sending all these more people to him. And then finally, after that, when he's talking to his friend, he's like, he's like, I'm praying, pray that this car starts. And he's like, you always say sh uh, f show faith. Well, now I'm asking you to show a little faith. And instead of just starting the car and hoping that it works, put your bags in the car and then start, and he does. And we find out that the professor, basically when it comes to the religious stuff, he becomes abusive, but not like physically abusive. It's, it's like mentally abusive. Ooh. He puts he puts her down. He puts the, the girl that he's dating down. The professor puts down the girl because she's a Christian and he's a strong atheist. And... Like, you know, she, she straight up leaves him. She goes to the college after talking to the pastor. And he's like, she's like, I'm leaving you. I know, and, and that was like in the cafeteria. Could in the imagine? cafeteria, right in front of everyone. All the kids. Could you imagine being a kid? Oh my gosh, that? that would be humiliating. But one, oh thing that, one thing that did make me mad is how he embarrassed her in front of everyone at the dinner that they had. I know. That she, was at the beginning cool. of the movie, she goes to the grocery store and she buys a certain wine. When they start drinking the wine, he's like, honey, this wine is terrible. And like, they start making fun of her, and she's like, I'm sorry, everyone. It's time for the help to read, to leave. And she she just leaves the house crying. I was like, oh, my gosh, you guys are vultures. You guys have no souls. <laughs> Actually, I'm sure that I'm, everyone has a soul. But they were just mean. I was like, dude, can you not pull your smart head out of your butts and realize what he is saying? She left the wine in the car by accident. Her plate's been full. The fact that her mom has dementia. You know, when you're going grocery shopping, hmm, buy the right wine or buy a wine or buy the right one that she thought she bought, but instead she's caring for her mother. You know, the one who gave birth to you and raised you and, you know, basically took care of you. That person. And then after that... that after that, she go, She breaks up with him, and then we get everything starts to connect. When he gives his, when Josh gives his final demonstration, he finally says, 
you know, it's all up to choice. The professor's like, so this whole entire presentation has just been to tell us that we have a choice. And then Josh is like, yes, the choice is up to them. You want everyone to believe, you want everyone to believe just like you.